my name is Wesley, and I'm the children's pastor here. And my name is Brenton, and I'm the worship pastor here. And we want... Wait a Hold second. On. Okay. Oh, that's uh, actually that's right. way better. I'm Wesley. Yes, and I'm Brenton. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Glad you guys are here for the last Wesley and Brenton ruin of this year. Yes, which might make some of you very, very happy, or some of us very sad. Very true, but... Wherever you guys are, wherever you land on that, we just hope that you're able to worship with us together as we study God's Word together. Yeah, that's right. I know these are really fun and silly, but we honestly try to plan these services so that everybody, no matter your age, can benefit from them while growing in your relationship with Christ. Yeah, that's right. And if you are new here, uh, if you've never been a part of a family service, all that you need to know is that Wesley and I do this because we really like to ruin Bible stories, especially children's stories. Because, oh, oh, right. Uh, we like to ruin them because sometimes the children's stories aren't, they don't tell the whole story, right? They might miss um, out on a few things of what God is trying to teach us. So we like to ruin them by bringing them back in line with what the Bible actually teaches. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You see, a lot of times we remember, mem- we remember Bible stories as we learned them when we were little kids, mm-hmm. but they're not always right. So we do these services to try to point us so that we all know the real, full, and accurate message given to us in Scripture. Yes, and so far, to date, we have ruined quite a few Bible stories. Yeah, we've done Adam and Eve, Mm -hmm. um, Noah's Ark. We did the paralytic who vandalizes the roof. Yeah, who goes to you of I. (laughs) Yeah, thank you for still laughing at that joke. Uh, The prodigal son, we ruined the story of Samson, Naomi, and Ruth. The Roman Centurion. Yeah, which if you want, you can check any of those out on our website or on YouTube, or you could listen to them on podcasts, but that would be not as as fun. fun Yeah, watching us fail. But this week, as you can tell from this slide up here, we are ruining the story of Jonah. Well, hold on, hold on. Didn't didn't we already ruin Jonah? We actually have not yet. A lot of people think that we have, um, including some on staff that will go nameless. Browns fan. (laughs) (coughs) Excuse me. (laughs) But Uh, we have actually not ruined the story of Jonah. Okay. Well, how should we start? Well, I think we should start as usual with a little game. All right. All right. So today, uh, oh yeah, so we're going to play tag. So I hope you guys all stretch. (laughs) Tie your sneakers, lace them up. No, no, no. no. Everybody's going to stand up. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, definitely don't stand up. Don't stand up. We are not playing tag. We're not? No. Why, why not? <laughs> Partly because you got a broken leg. <laughs> it's not broken. I had surgery. So was it cosmetic? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's fixed now. <laughs> Just healing. It looks broke. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no need to stand up. Although I will be asking for a few volunteers to come up on stage, but the rest of you are safe in your seats. We are going to co- play a little game called more or more. More, more. More, more. I, I think you mean more or less. Oh, yes. That is the saying, more or less. But the game we're playing today is more or more. All right. You guys ready to play a game? All right. So before we call up volunteers, just know you need to be coordinated. Okay? So if you're wondering if you're coordinated, if you can pat your head and rub your belly, immediately, you might be coordinated. Immediately. If you are on the varsity team, any team, you're probably coordinated. Or if people have accused you of being coordinated, well, you may not still be coordinated. But anyway. Probably so, looking for like a middle schooler, a high schooler, and an adult. So who's the most qualified? One. Okay. Yeah, come on up. In the back. She's like really raising her hand. Which you one? Out. There's a lot of who in the back. Should, yeah, who we... Should we let her redeem herself from eating coffee last time? Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> so, we Kelly, probably should. come on down. Come on up. All right. There we go. There we go. All right, give him a hand. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to give them one task to do. Okay, so as they do that task, and they, they do it well because they're all very coordinated, um, you guys, we're going to ask you a question, should they stop or should they do more? And you guys are going to respond with, oh, yes, come on. Very good. You guys are going to respond with, there very we go. Good. And then we're going to give them another task and see if they can do two tasks. 
and then three tasks, all the way up to 50 tasks, all right? <laughs> all right, here so, we go. Can any of you hula hoop? Can any of you hula hoop? Can you hula hoop? All right, let's, let's see, see it. it. Let's see it. Hey! Oh, you got it. I'm going to not block you. I really didn't oh. think you'd be able to do that. Very good. That's not the task. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the first task is going to be to hula around your arm. All right. Now, be careful. We don't need any fancy stuff, no showing off, because we do have some delicate stuff up on the stage here. All right. Yeah. I, I said that and then immediately flung this straight into the yeah. crowd. <laughs> Luckily, it went to the middle row, so no, you know, nobody was, oh, was no. hurt. But all right. So just around your arm. Go. There you go. Just around your arm. Oh. Still going. That's pretty good. Oh. I got it. Try one more time. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Pick your good there arm. There you go. There you Pick go. Good hey. All right. Hey. Should we have them stop? Or, or There we go. All right. So go ahead and stop. Go ahead and stop. Whoa. Whoa. All right. All right. This time, you are going to do the same task while dribbling a ball. With the other hand. With, the, with your other so hand. So dribble. Pick whatever. Hula. There you go. Whichever hand dribble. you want. Okay. I also and forgot go. to replace my plates. So we are there not There you go. Be. Very All right, good. should we have them stop? Oh, they want more. Okay, let's stop. I did not get more plates between services. That's all right. So we're going oh, to have to. Oh, careful. All right. <laughs> all right, here we go. I have this bag of breath that you will hold between your legs while doing the same task. Squeeze it all between right. your knees. <laughs> there all right. we go. <laughs> and go. He's got it. Oh, there we go. It. There we go. There get you it. go. Get it. <laughs> all right. Should we have him stop? All right. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. We got one now. Oh. We're just going to do this. Oh, that works. There we go. All right. All right. So this. You've got to balance it. We'll go on your head. If you're bald, it's harder. But you're not bald, so. Just balance it. There you go. Right there. <laughs> just got to hold it. Man, you're here. Yeah, I feel like that's gonna help. Should we do it that way? Oh, oh, oh which on. way? Maybe you should let them balance oh, it. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, okay. All right. Let's go. All right. Here and we go. Go. Ooh. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> he oh, got it! <laughs> nice work. Nice work. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> you need redemption. Okay. Yeah. One more try. One more try. Hold your, hold your head up a little higher. Okay. Use your build. There, there, there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right. Let's give them another round of applause. Good you guys job. can have a seat. Hey, you redeemed yourself. Thank you, you sir. Did. I got to use these rounds of stuff, stuff. Otherwise, it's they'll roll video. all over the place. Round and there's my corral for. All right. You guys things. can go sit down. Thank you so much. Good job. So, Brenton, what did we learn from that nice little game? We learned that second service is a lot more coordinated than first service. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. There is that. But also, don't stop when there's more. More what? More to do? <laughs> well, in this case, more to our story. Uh, I don't get it. Yeah, okay. Well, let's take our story that we're doing today. Jonah, for instance. Okay. What do you remember about the story of Jonah? Okay, I think I remember what most people remember about the story of Jonah. All right, and what is that? The Ark. <laughs> the Ark. Yeah, Wesley, don't you read your Bible? There's an Ark. Like a boat? There's no Ark. Well, then why is he called Jonah Ark? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, jo <laughs> that's Jonah of Ark, and she's not in the Bible. Okay, <laughs> well, and then why in the story do they talk about her legendary battle with okay. the shark? Okay, again, Jonah is a man, and I think you mean fish, and they don't battle. Yeah, but her ship breaks down, right, as, as she's fighting the shark, and then the engine stalls, and then the, the shark starts swimming towards her, and she says, we're going to need a bigger boat. That's, that's Jaws. Jaws. And then after the shark eats Jonah, she's in the belly of the shark for three whole years. Fish, him, and it's days. Okay, but then the shark spits her out. Um, oh, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. And then, and then, but God tells Jonah to go to some city in the desert. Um, what's the name of the city? 
Nineveh. Yeah, Nicaragua. And God tells her to go to this king and say, let my people go. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thankfully, we're back to the Bible, but that's Moses. <laughs> okay, but then she goes and tells him what God said, and the king hears it, and all the Nigerians, n- n- they n- repent, Ninevites. and then they become Christian, and then they, they, they become friends, all is well, the end, right? Not the end. So, I mean, okay, I might have left out a few details, <laughs> but I think that's the gist of the story. Yeah, you did. You did tell quite the story there, (laughs) but I think it might help all of us if we read the version of the the story that we all probably remember hearing as kids. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I I probably need to read it again, so I'll... Oh, there it is. I have it here for you. Okay, you guys can follow along on the screen with the pictures, not the words, because if I mess up, you guys won't know. (laughs) All right, Jonah and the big fish. Jonah was a prophet of God. One day... God told Jonah, go to the big city of Nineveh. Tell them to stop doing bad things. But Jonah ran away. He did not want to go to Nineveh. Instead, he got on a boat to sail across the sea. God sent a big storm to stop Jonah. The sailors on the boat were afraid. They thought the boat was going to sink. Jonah told the sailors, my God has sent this storm. If you throw me into the water, the sea will become calm again. So the sailors threw Jonah into the raging sea. Instantly, the sea became calm. Just then, Jonah saw a big fish coming. Gulp. The fish swallowed Jonah. For three days and nights. Oh, I see. It's days. Uh, Jonah was inside the fish. He prayed to God, please forgive me. Then God told the fish to spit Jonah onto dry land. God told Jonah a second time, Go and tell the people of Nineveh to stop doing bad things. This time, Jonah obeyed God. The people in Nineveh were sorry for doing bad things, so God forgave them. The end. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so I wasn't entirely off base. (laughs) It sounded like you barely got anything right. (laughs) Tomato, tomato. Okay, you well, know? well, I am glad we have gotten through the story because if you don't already see it, this is a story that we need to ruin. Wait, we need to ruin? Why? Th- that was the story. Yeah, I am sad to say, no, it was not. Just like our game earlier, don't stop when there's more. W- w- what else is there? You'll just have to see. DJ, theme music. It's Wesley and Brenton ruin two yeah. stories. What do you go, underhand? That was better? Was that better than yeah, first was better. Yeah, you got to get the pick slide Thank in, too. You. It's good. I do, do you my think best. we're ever going to get another theme song, by the way? Well, we, we have not gotten copyright claimed so far, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what needs to be ruined? Well, like I said, there's more. Okay, yeah, you, you said that, but you haven't really explained what. Okay, okay. Well, for one, there is an entire chapter missing. Okay, so the story says that Nineveh repents and God forgives them, yes, right? And, and that does happen. Yep, that, that part is true. That only takes us to the end of chapter three. There is a whole another chapter after that. Okay, but, but like, what else is there? Like, well, it's actually a crucial part of the story because it's, it's actually Jonah's interaction with God. Yeah, but again, like, what, what else is there to the story? Jonah preaches the gospel. The Ninevites hear it. They repent all as well. Yeah, not exactly. If you guys have your Bibles today, go ahead and pull those out. We're going to be in Jonah chapter 4. If you don't have your Bible, that is all right. We will have the words appear on the Sky Bible for you. This time, we're actually going to be picking up where the children's story left off. So we're doing it a little differently today. The children's story will be a little bit of context for us because we want to spend time on the end of the story, the rest of the story. All right, Jonah chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was angry, and he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you were a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Okay, wait, 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 wait. So Jonah is 
mad at God? Yeah, yeah, he's upset that he would show favor to the Ninevites and forgive them. Okay, but how, how bad were the Ninevites really? Yeah, okay, well, let me put it this way. They, they're the epitome of evil. I mean, you could compare them uh, in our modern thinking of, like, Nazi Germany, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong. <laughs> <laughs> Zedong. Zedong. <laughs> okay. Zay. But, but, <laughs> uh, the t- the, but what did enough. the Ninevites really do, though? <laughs> like, how were they so bad? We can actually read about their sins in the book of Nahum. Basically, God calls them out for plotting against him, idolatry, vile behavior, murder, lying, plundering, Ooh. enslaving nations, and exhibiting cruelty so bad that I'm not going to share it to save the innocence of this room. Okay, so essentially they were a lawless, brutal, merciless, perverse, and murderous people without any moral compass. Yeah, yeah, that's a good summary. Okay, but, but we know that no sin is too great um, for God's forgiveness and grace. I mean, we've talked about this before, but it bears repeating. The first time God describes himself is in Exodus 34, and it's actually repeated in Jonah. We just read it. And so this is the first thing that we hear from God about himself. And this is what God wants us to know about his character. It says, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. So God is a, is a God who is bent towards love grace and mercy. Yes. Yes, he is. And and praise God for that. That's exactly why we need to read Jonah chapter four, because it's because of who God is that Jonah runs away in the first place in chapter one and doesn't want to go to Nineveh. I I always thought he didn't want to go to Nineveh because he was afraid of the Ninevites because they were so wicked. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that that probably was one of the reasons for sure. But Jonah didn't go to Nineveh because he knew God and he knew that God would forgive them. Okay. So Jonah was mad because these Ninevites were so evil and they were murdering his people and other people and conquering nations. And so he felt that they didn't deserve any sort of grace or mercy, right? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. Jonah wanted them, to know, wanted them to get justice. He didn't want them to get mercy. Like we just read, Jonah's basically saying, I know what type of God you are and I'd rather die than to see your goodness and mercy given to these wicked and evil people. Oh, okay, okay, but then... Jonah's, when he's reminded of who God is, and then he repents, and then that's how the story ends, right? I mean, is that how you would act? Like, okay, think about this. Think about your worst enemy. My worst, oh, okay. So there was, this, there was this guy named Matt. No offense to any Matt in the room. He's not here. Um, but he picked on me in middle school because um, I was not as coordinated as our volunteers, and I could not play basketball. Very well. So he always teased me. Okay. So, so think of Matt in the middle of all of that school drama, okay? okay? And it's just getting worse and worse. Then you see your principal, who you, you like a lot. He's a nice, fair, and honest guy, okay? And you see him go up to Matt, and he's, he knows that he's been picking on you for a long time. And he goes up to Matt, and in front of the whole school announces that he and all of the staff forget Matt, forgive Matt for all of his bullying, um, just like that. What would you do? Well, I'd, I'd probably get really, really mad and storm out of that whole assembly as fast as I could. Yeah, okay. Okay, now, now picture that the principal comes after you. He sees you leaving. He comes after you, and he reminds you that he is a nice, fair, and honest guy and that you need to trust him. Yeah, that's still not going to make me feel better. Like, I, I, you know, Matt was a mean kid to me, and so I'd, I'd want him to be punished for what he did, and I'd probably want to end up switching schools. So, yeah, exactly. So I think you can relate a little bit to where Jonah's at here. <clears throat> what, do you, what do you mean? Well... So after Jonah says to God that he would rather die than to see God's forgiveness of these evil and wicked Ninevites, he goes and he makes a place to sit outside of the city walls just to watch and see what happens to Nineveh next. Okay, so, so basically Jonah, after saying his message, he just goes outside the city gates to see if God goes, ha ha, just kidding, and then like rain down fire on him, right? Yeah, That's exactly, exactly. Uh, I, I think, or he thought that God would see Jonah outside the city walls, pouting and being upset, and maybe just change his mind about forgiving the Ninevites. Okay, which as a parent, I can tell you kids, that doesn't work. You know, pout all you want, you're still not going to get candy for dinner, okay? <laughs> right. Just PSA. Yes, right. Either way, Jonah is sitting there, and he starts to get pretty hot. But because God loves Jonah, he causes this plant to grow, 
and it gives Jonah some shade. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, and Jonah thinks so too. Uh, the Bible says that, that it eased his discomfort, um, and Jonah was very pleased with the plant. Oh, and that's the start of why we have plants in our homes today, right? Yeah. No. Why would that be the start of indoor plants? <laughs> okay, but hang on. How long was Jonah sitting there by the city just waiting to watch it crumble? Uh, it was about a day. Okay, but plants don't grow that fast. No, yeah. No, it normally takes a while. Um, but in this case, I think God is doing another miracle here to show or to at least teach Jonah a lesson. Now, that had to be crazy. Like, how fast do you guys think what, that plant would have to grow? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, let's find out. So we need some volunteers again. You guys want to do another game? We're going to play a game called The Shade Game. There's the music. All right. <laughs> so we need three builders. We're going to look for young, some young elementary school kids. Sorry, guys. Mr. Gottschalk. Even though. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Ryan there. So in the Hello Kitty sweatshirt. And let's do, I saw her hand go up, sorry. I saw her hand go up first. All right, come on up. You guys are going to be our builders. And then I need three Jonas. This is an adult. I need an adult, sorry, for Jonas. Okay. All right, you guys can just yeah, line yeah. up right here. Um, right here, Ryan. A lot of people volunteering, but I'll get Hannah. Rick, you want to be Jonah? <laughs> All right, no, no, you guys are gonna come up to the front. Yep, you don't even have this to go. This is really easy for you guys. All you have to do is just sit here. Yeah. Okay. Rick, so I'm gonna have you I, sit right here in the middle. I prepared this spot right here. just for you. This spot. I'm gonna have you sit yeah. right here. I warmed it All up you gotta do is just service. sit. All right. Yeah, that's it. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. You notice we have lovely blocks behind you. You guys are going to build a plant to shade them. You have 60 seconds. So just don't don't lean it against them. You want to kind of give a little space, but you want to shade them. Okay? Ready? Go. Yeah. There yeah. you Let's go. Let's help you out a little bit. Whoa, whoa. There you go. There you go. This. this. Give you some over here. <laughs> we'll help you out. There you go. Block. Build it as tall as you can. Block. We want to make Block. sure that they are fully shaded. So Jonah, you're, you Block. guys are out and you Block. guys are watching. Block. See if Block. God changes his mind. Block. Block. Kick over here. You got like 20 seconds left. Get tall. Go tall. Go tall. Go tall. Go tall. Wait, tall. Go wide. Go tall. Tall. As tall as you can. Go up. Up. Mm. Keep going. Junk. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. We're helping out. Yeah. Ugh. We should have got some preschoolers because this is where these are normally at. The elementary Ooh. age. Oh, all right. Oh. All right. That's pretty we good. We got 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. <laughs> stop. Very nice. Okay. So step back. We're just going to have you. All right. Yep. So step you back. You guys can just hold tight right here with us. Builders, you guys can step back. Okay. So, back to our story. So, Jonah is sitting there. He's under this shade uh, of the plant, and then he sees that God provides for him, and that makes him happy, and he's sorry for uh, acting disobediently, right? And then he trusts God, and then all is well. Yeah. Again, that's what you would hope to read. But unfortunately, yeah, that's not the case. You know those movies where um, the main character just has so many chances to get it right? Um, yet through the entire movie, just continues to get it wrong. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's reading Jonah chapter 4. Okay. Um, God gives him this plant, and it makes him happy. Then we'll pick up in verse 7. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Man, this, this Jonah guy seems a lot more judgy and pouty than he did in the children's story. I mean, the roller coaster of emotions in this story are just off the charts here. Yeah, yeah. And this is the type of stuff you miss if you base your knowledge 
just purely off children's Bible stories and not the actual Bible. Okay, well, since I am a visual learner, that's why our Jonas are still sitting here, okay? Uh, we have our plants that our lovely builders have made, and they're still standing, and the story continues, and they have a worm, like God uh, has this worm eat the plant. So, Ellie, can you cry your worm and eat the plant? Just There you go, there you go. Good job, good job. Excellent. All right. All right. Excellent work, Ooh. worm. Ooh. Okay. All right. So, thank you. All right. And then there's a strong east wind. Okay. So, I'm going to have you be the east wind. So, just <laughs> huff and puff. <laughs> that was. No, no. You got you to. You got to. You got to. Hold, uh, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got. Hold on. I got something. All right, blow down the plants. Strong east wind. Both of them. Get this Both one too. Them. There you go. <laughs> good job. Very good. great right. job, east wind. And great then job. now that the plant has withered and died, there is a scorching sun, all right? And you're going to be our scorching sun with this. I need to step over here. Yep. Feel the heat. Right there. Right here. Feel the heat. Feel the heat. Do you, do you feel it? All right, hey Daniel, can we can we help out a little bit? Feel the heat. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna burn you. I wouldn't stand right there. There you go. All right. So when all of this happens, Jonah gets mad again, and he gets mad again at God, and he wants to die. All right. Yeah. Let's give our uh, contestants a round of applause. Thank you guys. You guys can find your seats. Don't worry about the mess. Yeah, you can leave it. Oh, thank you. But if I fall down. It That's will okay. be your fault. Sorry, I got a, I got a knee brace, so if I fall down. <laughs> my other knee. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually how the book of Jonah ends. We find out that God caused the plant and the worm in order to teach Jonah a lesson. Verse 10. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? So God asked Jonah if he's mad about the plant. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'm mad. That was my plant, and my plant died. My shade is dead. Yes, and then God, God points out to Jonah that he loved and enjoyed the plant and is now grieved when it dies, even though he had nothing to do with the plant. He didn't, he didn't plant the seed. He didn't water it. He didn't nurture it or anything. Yeah, he just sat back and enjoyed the plant. And then when it withers and dies, he gets really, really mad. Yeah. And then God, <coughs> being the great teacher and discipliner that he is, uses that to compare Jonah to Nineveh. Oh, okay. So God is drawing Jonah's attention to how much he loved and enjoyed the plant, even though he had nothing to do with the plant itself. He didn't help it grow. Um, And that he was all broken up and grieved about that when it died. And God is saying that shouldn't he as God, who causes all things to grow and is king of kings and lord of lords, shouldn't he have as much, at least if not more, pity for those people and nations who repent and seek after his face? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have this, this plant with very little to no eternal significance in comparison to a people made in God's image. Even though they are sinners, since God leans towards mercy and grace, when they repent, shouldn't his heart break and he show compassion and mercy on them? I mean, yeah, the, uh, God desires for all people to repent and come to him. That's what we read about in 1 Timothy 2.4. It says, God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So it makes sense that even though they were extremely wicked and evil, God's love and grace and mercy was that much greater. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's actually another interesting thing. It, there is one word that appears four times in this story. Yeah, I know. Shark. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> there's, no, there's no shark. Okay, well, I have no clue. Okay, okay. the word is appointed. Okay, so God appoints four things in the story, the first being the fish. Yes, which is used to bring Jonah to humility and set him on the right course in obedience to God. Yep. The second, God appoints the plant that shades Jonah. Then he appoints the worm that eats the plant and then withers and dies. And the fourth thing he appoints is the east wind. Yeah, which all work together to bring Jonah to a position of humility and set him on the right course in obedience to God. That's right. And that actually has me thinking, 
What is God appointing in our lives that brings us to a position of humility and puts us on a track of obedience to him? Yeah. Well, I would say for me, sometimes I think God uses people in my life to humble me and set me on the right course. So for instance, my wife does a good job of this. She's constantly pushing me and helping me grow and lean into trust and praying and, and trusting in God and all that. Yeah, that's good. For, for me, even sickness is a reminder to stop doing things my own way and just trying to control every single outcome. God often uses that time of suffering to make me be thankful in the moment, um, but also to help me not put my hope in the things that I think I can control. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a good reminder. Okay, so here, here's this question. What's the meaning of this story? Like, why do we even have Jonah in the Bible anyways? Yeah, well, I think that Jonah, when you read the whole story, is about a man who knew God. He, he loved him, he worshiped him, he trusted him, but he trusted him so much that that causes him to disobey him. The children's book kind of has Jonah as this hero, but that actually removes how relatable Jonah actually is. He's just as flawed and broken as the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> and we also get to see that God is personal and relational. Like in Jonah's life, God scheduled all of these appointments throughout the story that forced him back into God's presence and really give him the grace and the opportunity to correct his path. Yeah. Yeah, and Jonah is just such a great study because it can be taken in so many different perspectives. It can, it can be a story about um, our difficulty sometimes with God's decisions, mm-hmm. um, or it can be about you can see where God is just meeting us where we're at. Yeah, it's also a a character study of God's character of grace and mercy, or it's about the importance of repentance and heeding God's word. Yeah, or or preaching the gospel to our enemies, loving them and seeing them as image bearers just like we are. This is why Jonah is such a good story, and it's it's not about the fish. Shark. Or whatever it is. Although sharks are pretty cool. Jonah is really a story where God's glory is just clearly on display in so many different ways. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Okay, so how should we end this? Well, I thought we could end this time by reading the whole story again. Well, I mean, the whole, it's four chapters. I don't think we have time to read oh, yeah. four chapters in Jonah. No, we'll just do the, the children's version. We just, we just ruined it. Like, I don't want to read it again. I think what we need, and I think what everybody's looking for, is the first ever WB Ruined fixed version of the children's Bible story. I don't know if they're ready for that. Do you guys really want to read the children's story that we fixed? Do you guys want to read that version? I don't know. Okay, well, just be prepared, okay? Because we are experts. We've been doing this now for almost two years. (laughs) So as you're reading this, don't be surprised that if you look down and you realize your socks are gone because they've been blown off, okay? That's all I'm saying. Here we go. This is Jonah. He was told to go to the evil people of Nineveh and commanded <clears throat> and command them to repent. But Jonah hated the Ninevites and didn't want to obey God. So instead, he got on a boat and went as far as he could in the opposite direction to a city called Tarshish. Then <clears throat> God caused a great storm. The fearful sailors thought someone must have upset the gods and cast lots to find out who. The lots fell on Jonah, so they went to question him. Jonah confessed, I am a Hebrew running from the true God who made everything, including the sea. If you throw me overboard, the storm will stop and you will all be saved. Not wanting to kill Jonah, they tried everything else they could that they could think of, but still the storm raged on. So they cried out to God and asked forgiveness before finally throwing Jonah overboard. The storm stopped at once. Seeing this, the sailors were amazed and began praising and worshiping God from that day on. Meanwhile, God caused a great fish to come and swallow up Jonah, where he stayed for three days and three nights. In the belly of the great fish, Jonah prayed to God. He prayed a prayer of thanks for saving him from certain death. Then God caused the great fish to spit Jonah out on dry land. God tells Jonah again to go to Nineveh and preach repentance. Jonah decides to finally obey God this time, and he heads to Nineveh. The king of Nineveh hears Jonah's message and commands the people to repent so that God will not destroy them. 
When God sees this, he shows mercy to the people of Nineveh. But Jonah did not like this. I knew you were a merciful and gracious God. You always want to forgive. That's why I didn't want to go to Nineveh in the first place. Jonah then went outside the city walls to wait and see what would happen to the city and the Ninevites next. As he waited, God caused a plant to grow and shade Jonah from the hot sun. And this made Jonah happy again. But then God caused a worm to eat the plant so that it withered and died. Then God caused a hot wind to blow, and it got really hot. This made Jonah very angry again. God then asked, Jonah, why are you so angry? For you did not, nothing to help this plant grow, just as you've done nothing for Nineveh. Shouldn't I have compassion on such a great city? The end. <clears throat> Check. Everybody look at your shoes. Make sure your socks are still on. What? (laughs) Orchards, it is always a pleasure when we get to come together and worship and be in God's word together. It is especially uh, an honor uh, when we just all get to be in here together. Uh, Would you pray with us? Lord, thank you uh, again just for bringing us all together. Um, Lord, the, the joy that comes from just us being together um, as a family, worshiping you, lifting the glory to you. Uh, Lord, and, and we thank you um, that, that you um, are a sovereign God. You are, you are um, eternal. Um, you are all-powerful, Lord, and you are never changing. Lord, what is true in your word um, thousand years ago, 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, Lord, is continually true today um, because of how consistent you are and because of your nature. Lord, we thank you for your nature, that you are a good and gracious, merciful God. Um, Lord, we thank you for stories of Jonah in their completeness um, that you use uh, for us to wrestle with, Lord, ultimately to point us to you and reveal who you are, to speak to us, Lord, um, that you are a God that wants to have a relationship with us um, and make us more like your son. Uh, Lord, be with everyone this week as we head in this week. Lord, thank you for these times to remind us to be thankful. Um, help us to, to remember um, how you are in control of everything, Lord, um, that you are um, calling us to obedience before you. Um, and help us just see the true joy and peace that can be found in having a relationship with you. Through your son, Lord, we are so thankful and we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. If you would like to give to our ministry, please check out our website at lewistonocc.org. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to this podcast, as well as our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram, so you're always up to date with what's going on here at Orchards Community Church. Take care, and God bless.